Who likes donuts? Raise your hand. To everyone who raised their hand, I'm sorry to disappoint, but I sincerely believe that donuts are ridiculous. A donut is a fried piece of dough covered in hyper-sweet icing. I still remember the last time I was out with friends at Dunkin' Donuts when I bit into a layer of colorful sprinkles, then a layer of shiny glaze, and then a layer of crunchy sugar. The culinary world has so much more to offer. But there is something I do love. Circles. Oh, and economics. This shape allows us to visualize the world around us and look at economics through a different lens. This concept is known as circular economics. The goal of this idea is to reduce the amount of resources we use by eliminating waste and reusing products to shorten the supply chain. There is one problem with this model. It is so simplistic that it's been thrown around as a buzzword by governments and corporations around the world to seem eco-friendly. One notorious example is plastic recycling. This is not to say that plastic recycling is bad, but it has been exploited partic particularly by multinational corporations as a method to cover up their environmentally damaging actions. Let's look at the case of Nestle. In 2008, they claimed in a full-page newspaper ad that bottled water is the most environmentally responsible consumer product in the world. Nestle reasoned that their bottles use more recycled plastic, but it's important to remember that just because something is more recyclable, that doesn't make it greener. The fundamental issue with recycling is that it incentivizes us to keep consuming. Less than 10% of plastic ever produced has been recycled. Or what about the case of Coca-Cola and the introduction of Coke Life in 2013? Ah yes, a recyclable, single-use plastic bottle with a green label and 10 teaspoons of sugar. So healthy, so natural, so sustainable. An annual brand audit by an NGO found that Coca-Cola has been the world's top polluter for the fourth year in a row. But yes, we strive for a world without waste. And we shouldn't forget the 2021 Reuters investigation, which revealed that corporate giants, including Coca-Cola and Nestle, are sending their plastic to waste to burn as fuel for cement production. These and other corporations have marketed their products in a way that removes the guilt from consumers by presenting a facade of green thinking that distracts from the complex realities of the problem. But back to donuts. There is one donut that I love, and that economist, Oxford economist, Kate Raworth calls the only donut that is good for you. Now you may be thinking, how does this sugary sweet have anything to do with economics? The donut economic model visualizes what humanity needs to achieve this century. The space in the donut's hole are our shortfalls. In other words, what we are currently failing to accomplish. The space outside the donut are our ecological ceilings. In other words, our planet's boundaries that we should not exceed. Our safe space is the donut. This is where we thrive in an economy that provides education, healthcare, housing, water, food, and energy for all. This is where we are guaranteed a living wage, decent work, gender equality, a political voice, peace, and social justice. But this is also an economy where we aggressively tackle and mitigate the impacts of the climate crisis, eliminating air and chemical pollution while minimizing biodiversity loss. So following this model, how are we doing? Not, not so well. The red shading indicates our current shortfalls and overshoots. And beyond this single diagram, a, study by, a recent study by a group of ecological economists concluded that no country is living in the donut. We've got some work to do. But what does the actual application of the donut look like? It's important to remember 
the, the, that the donut is a model that can and should fit in the context of a local community. Organizations, companies, governments, everyone can do their part to move closer into the global donut. But the seeds of collective action must grow from the bottom up to pressure those in power to change. Together, we can overcome the challenges that building this new economic vision will take. From resistance to change by the political establishment, or these top 0.1%, to a practical inability to implement localized solutions. But even on a micro school level, the donut can still be applied. Let's go back to recycling. Half a year ago, we started a local precious plastic group at our school. Our mission is to close the plastic waste gap by creating upcycled products from 100% community plastic waste, implementing a more efficient recycling program, and educating our community about plastic recycling opportunities. We sold all these products back to our community. With the money raised, we are purchasing new equipment that will expand our production capacity. Not only did we create a circular loop, but we were also bringing our school closer into the donut by eliminating plastic waste, and pollution. This project utilizes the equipment available at our school to raise awareness about plastic pollution, but more importantly, hopes to inspire our community and beyond to eliminate single-use plastic. Another example of the donut in action is a new scheme that I worked on as treasurer for our student council. Over the years, we had accumulated a healthy surplus, but we hadn't really spent much of that money. There are over 50 student-led service projects at our school. So we came up with an initiative called Loans for Impact, whereby the student council provides interest-free loans to student groups for their projects and events. A key part of the donut is creating an economy that is regenerative and distributive. Loans for Impact redistributes money back to our school community. But it could also multiply further by allowing clubs to expand their fundraising efforts. This scheme has the potential to provide student groups with the financial support they need to leave an impact and invest in our wider communities. But I think we, as a school, need to do better. We cannot overshoot our ecological ceilings. We should electrify our bus fleet. We should establish a permaculture garden and integrate its use into our curriculum. We should expand the scope of our existing greenhouse. Let's ensure that the electricity we purchase comes from renewable resources and close the food waste gap by composting to then grow our own food. Let's comprehensively educate all members of our community to become not only socially responsible consumers, but advocates for action and politically aware citizens. Let's truly provide students with the tools to inspire change real grassroots change to at our school and beyond. Implementing policies that fit this donut framework means becoming a model for other organizations and opens up opportunities for us to share our knowledge on a global stage on how to build a genuinely sustainable future. We live in a world where the richest 1% own 43% of global wealth, and where the richest 10% have been responsible for 52% of cumulative carbon emissions in the past 30 years. Yet, almost 10% of the global population still live in extreme poverty, and 97 million people were pushed into poverty because of COVID-19. It's time to move beyond the endless pursuit of rapid and unequal growth. It's time to create a regenerative, just, and equitable economy. It's time for humanity to crunch past the endless layers of sugar and get into the dough of the donut. Thank you.